Kia ora everybody, SJ here from NZ Fight Report. Uh, we've got a bit of a treat for you this time. Uh, with all the hype around the UFC, we managed to uh, have a chat to uh, one of our greats. How's it going? Good, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. How's home? Good, say hi. <laughs> So last time we talked to you uh, was in November at the Aotearoa MMA Expo. You were coming off an injury and just getting back into training. It's really good to see that you've pulled through that and come off with an epic win over Struve at UFC 159 in Saitama, Japan. Just wanted to touch a bit more on that victory. So, you know, it's your fourth win on the go at UFC. Uh, it's a huge KO. Broke the kid's jaw. So uh, a little bit about the training leading up to it. You trained with Marco Villela um, in preparation for the Struve fight. How was it uh, training with such a big boy, six foot seven, um, you know, in BJJ? Um, it was good training with Marcus. He's like a really tall guy. But he's the only like, guy who's six eight or six seven around the Oceania area to train. So he, he's the only one that comes close to Struve in that sense. So it was good to work with him. You trained in Japan with Jason Supercharge Vemoa for this fight too. You guys go way back. How was that? I mean, we've seen photos of you hitting pads uh, while Jason's standing on a huge platform, way, you know, with his pads way up in the air. How was that? It was good, but because uh, um, Jason's, um, he's a really nice guy. He's one of the Kaikushin guys. We want to raise crew, but he helped me out a lot. Um, he's got, you know, a lot of experience and knowledge of being a cornerman, so... It's good. Um, I, I was lucky to have work with him, so, you know, you know, with all the politics around Kaika Shin and all that jazz, yeah, it's kind of weird there, but yeah, you know, thanks to Steve and Jason, so they're all down for it, so it was good. In terms of Japan, you've built a huge fan base there with your K1 career. What was the energy like being back there again, fighting in front of all those fans? It was good. It's just right. It's always good to fight in front of the Japanese fans, because they always... I appreciate fighters. Tell us about a few of the challenges fighting a guy with that crazy height and reach. It was, it was, it was. Uh, it took a little bit of time to try and get uh, through it to work it out. But um, um, it's, 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 it's been a while since I had a fight, and um, it's just everything. You know, when you haven't fought for a while, it takes a while to get back into it. So trying to get the time and everything right, but uh, I got there in the end. I, I won, so that's the main thing. Awesome. One of my best performance, my. I didn't get a second win. It was like, you know, it's like I haven't, haven't done it for a long, long time. So, I mean, a year is a long time to wait out. And that's not an excuse. I mean, you got to, it, it, uh, fighting is like an emotional roller coaster, and you got to go through all that stuff again if you're not doing it for a year. It, it takes a toll, so, you know. Yeah. I, I can see, and I saw that you talked about in your post fight interviews about kind of losing a bit of gas there, to, uh, you know, towards the end of the fight. But, you, you know, you really dug deep. Is that something you're going to be working on for the next one? Yes, the next one I'll be in, and I'll be. I won't have to cut weight for the next one. I'll be in totally good shape, and um, he's gonna have a lot of problems with me. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be ready. So, ready. Your knockout of Stefan was really similar to your knockout of uh, Chris um, Tuksha a couple of years ago at UFC One Twenty Seven. In both cases, straight after you hit him, you casually got, you know, casually uh. walked away. What's going through your mind there? Why the casual walk off? Yeah, it was like, look, I, um, he wasn't coming back up. That was a, um, uh, it was a good shot. He, it was a pinpoint precision. It was a good shot. He's not going to come back from that. Uh, if he did, if he was, he would have been up already. So, but I knew he had a problem. But um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't keep going because you know, he was done. There was, I mean, his, you know, I didn't realize how bad his injury was, and it was good for him that I didn't keep going. Otherwise, you probably got, would have got broken in different places instead of just one. Because once it breaks, there's not much you know, uh, resistance left for the rest of the jawbone or whatever. When it gets hit more places, it's easier to break. And now, uh, so you're heading back to New Zealand uh, for your fight camp with the Dos Santos fight. So can you tell us about the preparation for the Dos Santos fight? I'm going to be working a lot with, on my body conditioning, my um, working with Alex Flint and Net Fit and Pamela. I'm going to be working my striking with Law. And my um my ground stuff with Steve, so all oh, Steve's camp is waiting there for me. I just my biggest thing is getting um is getting <laughs> is getting in my my uh, conditioning right. And um with the modified strongman I've been doing with Alex is really helping a lot. I I I become a lot smaller. I'm gonna be uh, losing like 15, 20 kilos for the fight. So I'll hopefully try and weigh in at one ten or something. 
So I still have a lot of uh, weight there, but I'm, I'm a lot more explosive and a lot more stronger. So I'll be ready this time. You watch. This, this monkey's going to be down. <laughs> <laughs> it's what we like to hear. So you're officially recognized as a top 10 world heavyweight. How's it feel? Yeah, top 10. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, no surprise to me. I've, I've always felt like I'm one of, the, one of the best fighters in the world. And um, I'll always feel the same. It's probably until I quit fighting. Maybe it's just, um, it's not being arrogant. I just feel that way. I've always, always have. And uh, I get asked that question all the time about fighting, you know, this this and that. And I said, oh, you know, um, in this game, you either stand up or get the hell out of the way. It's it's that simple. So The New Zealand media, so mainstream media in New Zealand's finally started to pick up on the fact that, you know, you're getting, you're succeeding. And James DeHuna as well succeeding. Dylan Andrews is now in um, Ultimate Fighter. How satisfying is it knowing that the media back here is finally taking notice of you guys? Well, for me, honestly, um, it, it, it's, it's really good for me. I was disappointed that they didn't put nothing on, on Jamie. When I, when I was told I, I went on the news and I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, they're getting there, they, you know, it's, it's finally making way. I mean, I just got asked by the 60 Minutes to do another, 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 another yeah. thing on 60 Minutes. But the last summer, they did, I did some work with them. <clears throat> they really shit it upon me, so I told her where to go. <laughs> Fair I mean, enough, I, man. I, I'm doing my thing for my sport. And, you know, I'm... I'm now, as a pioneer, I'm trying to help build and everything, but um, I, I don't want to work with people like 60 Minutes because they just, they just dragged me through the mother last time. And I, I will never forget that. that that's, um, I forgive them, but you know, I just, it doesn't sit well. If they want to do more interviews with me, they're going to pay. I'll make them pay. I don't care. <laughs> so speaking of James Dehuna, he's also fighting alongside you at a UFC 160 uh, facing Glover Teixeira. How does it feel to have a good mate? You know, good New Zealander fighting alongside you. Well, it feels good. Uh, Jamie texts me. Uh, we were talking, texting, and then um, I asked him, I said, you should try and get on, um, before all this hoo-ha came up. Oh, no, you don't. I said, you should try and get on the car, because, you know, I already know I was, I was on the car fighting. I said to him, you should try and get on the car, and he talked to his management in there, and, um, and uh, he was on there, so it was good. Before he announced, he told me he was fighting in a glove, so I was really happy for him. I was like, man, that's... um. That's the only way to do it there. I mean, to try and get into the big, the top, the top level, you've got to fight the top guys. And, you know, so it's really, it's a good opportunity for both of us. Uh, and, and, and um, you know, for everyone else that fights from this side of the world, the ocean, and uh, it's good opportunities. I mean, like, like, like I said before, they don't come up very, very often. And as a fighter, you've got to take them when they come up. So it's good news for me. I mean, it's good news for Jamie. It's good for all of us. I mean, like, just trying to sort out training camps, you know, with him. Um, but he's going to be doing his training camp here in Oz. Um, what, that's what works for him with this stuff. So for me, uh, I love to go do my modified strongman stuff to help my body. Because I'm getting older. I'm not a young horse. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like an old dog. <laughs> I'm one of those old mutts that don't get out of the front door. But uh, i got to do all that stuff to, uh, to, to help myself to get better mentally and physically. So i try to get to Vegas and uh, meet up with Jamie over there with his team and then work together to try and... Um, to move forward and move forward in the UFC, so yeah. Talking about the differences between a fighter from New Zealand and Australia and US, what are the differences? Do you think the main differences between Oceania and American fighters? Well, the difference is the Oceania fighters. We don't have any any pro teams down here. We don't have uh, you know not much people do it full time. You know, I've been doing this for well over 15, 12 years as a pro fighter, and even back as a K1 fighter. As a pride fighter, as a dream fighter, you don't get the camps that help. You know, as a as a kickbox, you didn't need camps really. You just need aspiring with guys. But um, for MMA, it's different. So, but there's no big pro teams here. Maybe one day we'll get a pro team down in the Oceania that'll help build the fighters here. As in, like you know, guys to work with. Your level of of everything else doesn't go up unless you train with someone that's a lot better than you. So. Uh, yeah, that's the, I think that's the only downfall. Everyone down here tries to go overseas and train, you know, so... Do you think that um, New Zealand and Aussies have to go overseas in order to make a career in this sport? Like, they have to, you reckon they have to fight in America? Well, they have to fight overseas to get um, to get more exposure and everything. I mean, I've always fought from this side of the world, but, um, you know, just I've later had to try and move over camp, but I'm always trying to stay home and train... Because it's good, it's good for uh, you know being here and trying to help the local guys trying to get further ahead in the careers. But yeah, you got to fight overseas. 
when you when you're talking in your interviews and pre-fight and stuff, you don't you're not particularly aggro. You know, you don't really smack talk in your opponents. How do you stay calm? Like, is this how do you avoid being that angry fighter stereotype? Well, you know, the, the the for me, I've been doing it a while, experience. But Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyphen, I'm a, you probably say I'm a bit, what's uh, what is it, split personalities or a bit crazy. But I, you know, like everyone says, you change persons when you go into fight. It just depends on when you can change that person to come out. I have a a different personality as a fighter when I go into the ring. I I, don't, I try to zone in as a fighter because if you don't change personality, trying to change the way you think, you're gonna get hurt. It's it's you know. You, you, Leave the guy outside to do this sort of stuff, and you tend in the guy as a fight. I went to a psychologist not so long uh, before. I had anger issues because I was that person. But um, the, the psychologist told me, you know, as a fighter and as a father, you know, when you finish fighting, you know, take ten minutes, half an hour, cool down, take off the fighter's hat and put on the father hat. So I tried that, and it's been working ever since. You know, I haven't got anger issues anymore, or as crazy as. Because, you know, trying to break the, break the wall every day in training is, is hard. And at my age, you know, I've been doing it for such a long time every day, just the wall gets further and further away. You know, it just it becomes you know, a hard thing to try and get all the time. So, you know, changing hats as a, as a father, coming home, not being so angry. angry. Um, you know, my oldest son is in Scotland now. Caleb, he was, it was hard for him to deal with, with me looking after him because... I was like that, uh, a real angry person, because you got to be that angry person all the time to cope as a fighter. You know, you, you, you're like a walking around a, a crazy, crazy, you know, crazy maniac. <laughs> Actually, a crazy fresh maniac. He's like, hey, man, this is the craziest fresh you'll ever see on this planet is me walking around before. I'm so glad I went to the psychologist and sorted out my issues. So it's better now. I feel better as a, as a father, and I, my wife will probably tell her I'm a much better person. And my kids, as um, as I swap hats as, as a fighter, you know, so nice I, from fighter to a father, so yeah. <clears throat> well, I think there's some really good advice, you know, out to anyone that's fighting at the moment. So, do you think a game plan is an important part um, going into a fight, or to what extent do you stick to the game plan, or versus you know, adapt to the situation? Okay, uh, look, I, I think a game plan is good. I like, I don't like, I like to sort of figure out. Not basically what I do, but I have something in my mind. But my, my game plans only work in the ring. I, I try to go in there, feel the person out, and then try to make a game plan from there using the skills that I have. Yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But um, look, that's my idea of a game plan. I've got, I've got to try and work a game plan when I'm actually in the, in the, in the, in the ring of Octagon and try and figure them out pretty quickly. So that's how I do it. And that's my, my, my personal opinion. People, people are different. Knowing Joe R- Rogan's podcast go for so long, would you ever consider being on one? Uh, podcast with Joe, of course. Uh, he's a funny guy, I like him. Of course, I mean, um, you probably put me on whenever, but <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Alright, what do you think you'd be doing if you weren't fighting? I'd probably be in jail or something, you know, I grew up wrong side of the tracks. And I didn't, and I, and I, only, like, I, think, I think God, because he saved my life. You know, I thought it was myself and, and, and martial arts that saved my life, but it wasn't wasn't any of that. It was it was actually, you know, my, uh, the Almighty that saved my life. Every single time I've been in a bad situation as a kid, he's all, I've always been able to get through it all. So the right decision at the right time, you know, he's helped me guide me through my life. So I believe my faith is a big part of where I am today. I believe totally. I, I step back from, from, from my life, take it over where I want to go with my life and... Let God take over what He wants to do with my life. So, pretty much, and that, and this is just my opinion. So, um, you know, it's not really. I'm not really want to judge everyone else, but um, these are my my beliefs. So, you always talk about opportunities. Are there any opportunities that you're actively seeking uh, in the MMA world at the moment? I don't. You know, I've, I've gone past money, and all that has been an issue as part of why I fight. And um, I think. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really seeking any. I'm happy where I'm at right now. I'm happy. I'm I'm still employed. I'm still working. You know, I've got some of the biggest opportunities coming in my life this next fight. So that's all I'm looking forward to is, is one fight at a time. And um, I don't really care what happens after that. I mean, I life. I mean, like our life on this planet is pretty short. And um, we're all mortal, so we're all gonna die anyway. <laughs> and uh, that's the way I look at it. You know, I feel like one of the old old dogs still going, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all good. Not quite ready to step down yet, though, right? Oh, man, you know what? If I'm going to go out, I'm going out on my back. 
I don't give a damn. I'm going out the way I came, and I'm going out as a fighter, and I'll leave as a fighter when I'm ready. So if you, go, the only way to take me out of this is to put me out. <laughs> How's the website going? So what, what's the website address? Where can we go and have a look? Website's going well. My website's called uh, Mark Hunt Official. Um, uh, you know the the guys that run that organize that. That's um, it's a good a good thing for business. Uh, it's just something that you know people can be a part of me if they want to be a part of, of uh, the fighting and everything. So, you know, markhunterofficials.com, you can go check out and buy something. Did you find a KFC in Japan? No. <laughs> no! Oh, who has the best KFC in the world? Probably, uh, I don't know, down here is pretty nice. Australia and New Zealand are pretty nice KFCs. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, right, Mark. Thanks for the time. Awesome. Bye. Appreciate yeah. it. Hey, bye. bye. Now.